Hey guys, welcome back. So this is a fascinating story that's developing right now. Uh, it was brought to my attention by a subscriber who actually has a veterinary background. And what has happened is down in Texas, there's been this mysterious disease spreading amongst dairy cattle. What's causing a mysterious illness in some dairy herd populations in the Southern Plains? Veterinarians are right now in the field trying to find out. As we first told you yesterday, dairies in the Texas Panhandle seem to be hit the hardest, but there are also cases reported in New Mexico and Kansas. On your screen are some of the common symptoms which can last up to 14 days. And while the illness is not reported to be deadly, it's cutting milk production by 10 to 20%. Okay, and I'll get to this in a second because they've discovered what it is. But this person told me that these cattle were displaying flu-like symptoms. And based upon what I have read in correspondence between veterinarians, agricultural departments, it was assumed that this was spreading as a virus between cattle. Um, now they, they, they they talked about how it was mainly affecting older cattle, um, but it's it was still kind of a developing thing in some of the messages I have read. Now it has come out, uh, and I think within the last 24 hours or so, that they have identified this disease, get this, as HPI, HPAI, sorry, highly pathogenic avian influenza. Now I've done a video on this influenza, I've done several videos on HPAI, and we've actually interviewed somebody on HPAI. The, um, the bird flu has been spreading in an unusual manner over the past several years. There are um, groups like down in Georgia that have been doing gain of function studies on HPAI. I'm sure you guys have a lot of comments on that. HPAI is particularly dangerous to humans if it gets into the human population and if it is spread by viral infection, it would wipe out 50% of the human population. Actually, no, I think it's a lot worse than that. I've done some research on HPAI. I want you to listen to this real quick. Okay, so let's talk about what makes this bird flu. In, in my perspective, not just my perspective, but many scientists who study it, extremely unusual. Number one, the bird flu is normally not this intense. Okay, we've ha we had an intense bird flu in 2015, but we're blowing those numbers out of the water. Um, we're blowing those numbers out of the water and it's global. I mean, this is a global thing. They said in Japan, the bird flu has been spreading like wildfire. Um, I mean, in, in the UK, they're calling it an extinction level event. So what we're seeing here in the US isn't even, it doesn't even compare to what we're seeing globally. Um, bird flu generally starts with waterfowl and it festers in waterfowl, it generally doesn't even kill waterfowl, and that's how it spreads. But what we've been seeing with this bird flu is that it's actually been killing waterfowl. It's been entering more species than any other bird flu that we've ever seen. So this new strain of HPAI has spread uh, across the globe more so than any other strain that we've seen. It's been found in New Zealand, Venezuela, Portugal, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia. So this strain has been spreading through South America fairly quickly. Um, Europe, Japan, Asia, the United States. This is a global event. This is, this is a pretty massive ordeal right now. And they're referring to it as a new strain. So, you know, we, we hear a lot of people talk about new strains of things. Everything seems to be somewhat of a new strain, but we haven't seen a strain necessarily this powerful, and that's the point of it. It is impacting waterfowl in a way that it normally wouldn't impact them. The Netherlands, it actually uh, shut down, a, they, they had to call six million birds this past year. Of course, you know, that, that does, you know, I could see how people would think that that has more to do with them trying to shut down 3,000 farmers. And don't get me started on that. They are shutting them down. They basically said, we're, you, you sell to us or we're going to force you to sell to us. Um, I feel like that's a whole other video of, of just, I, I don't know. I, I don't understand these these food hubs and, and how they're supposed to work or how they're supposed to benefit anybody. But the Netherlands, shutting down farmers in the Netherlands is is just adding to global food insecurity since the Netherlands is the largest producer of meat and dairy in Europe. 
I, I'm really not sure if people have really wrapped their brain about around that one or what's going on there. Um, but uh, the other food hub that I can think of, uh, and when I'm talking about food hubs, I'm, I'm talking about these new W, you know, that group food hubs was Sri Lanka. And Sri Lanka's, I mean, anyway, back to the bird flu. According to the Hakai Magazine of Coastal Sciences and Societies, seabirds shouldn't die from the flu. The type of influenza virus that infects birds, known as influenza A or bird flu, is traditionally mild. Most birds don't show any sign of sickness. Its natural habit habitat is within digestive systems of seabirds and waterfowl. That's its natural habitat, such as ducks and geese. It spreads through bodily fluids and fecal matter in the water. It's a natural part of wetland and coastal ecosystems. But this outbreak has killed thousands of seabirds. It's impacted 80 different species of birds. It has also survived through the summer, a season usually free from influenza in the Northern Hemisphere, and it jumps into mammals, an entirely new host. And that's true. There was recently a, a, a bird flu outbreak on a mink farm in Spain. So the bird flu has, a, a, has obviously been able to, this, this particular strain, which is an unusual strain, as you just heard, this particular strain has been able to jump into mammals and infect mink farms. It has also been able to jump into humans. Now, it's very rare that you see a bird flu strain having the ability to uh, impact mammals and humans. But this particular strain has not only infected an entire mink farm, which are mammals, but it has actually killed a, a woman in her 30s in China. On December 2nd, it killed a 38-year-old woman in China. It shouldn't surprise you given this information that the Scientific Pandemic Influenza Group on Modeling, SPIM, is understood to be standing ready to produce forecasts on the impact of bird flu on humans. SPIM is a subcommittee of the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergency SAGE, which has provided recommendations to the government throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. A scientific advisor to the government said there is a lot going on behind the scenes gearing up for any possible avian flu issues. A lot. They're planning on this. They've, they've been... The wheels are spinning already. Official figures from World Health Organization show there have been 868 cases of human infection with the avian flu virus over the past 20 years. While variants of the virus had a mortality rate in people of around 60%, the current variant is understood to have a lower rate of between 20% and 40%. But this compares to a death rate during the peak of COVID-19 infections of just 2%. So now this highly unusual highly unusual avian flu has made it into the, the dairy supply. And it's not just the panhandle of Texas that's been impacted. This, they've actually found cases in Kansas as well. My theory is that this is actually more widespread than we assume. You have to remember when it comes to beef cattle and the beef industry, a lot of these animals are out to pasture um, and, and they roam great great distances. They're not, you know, necessarily somebody standing over them every day like what you have in a dairy farm. So how far this has spread within the bovine population will be interesting to see as this story continues to unfold. Um, will it impact meat prices? I don't know because we don't know how far it has spread. But my theory is that it is already spread further than what we've been, we've been made aware of. Um, but, the, you know, the other concerning side of this is that we started seeing you know, this, this bird flu end up in, in mammals, particularly things like mink, animals that would eat birds. And so it wasn't unusual to see them contract a disease from eating the birds. And maybe, you know, this is specific to dairy. Maybe it's, you know, being found, you know, birds are pooping in their feed or something. I don't know, but it seems as though the spread of it, um, it seems to be uh, a little different than, than food contamination, and I could be wrong. You know, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud, this is a developing story for everybody. Um, but it will be interesting to see what happens here. 
and we need to be concerned about the spread of HPAI into mammals, and now it's spreading into mammals that don't eat birds. It's not seals, it's not other animals that eat birds that are getting this. I could be wrong, but I think this is a rather significant event, and I wanted to get this video out there, and I'll be following the story as more of it unfolds because it is rather interesting, and it's a bit concerning you know, that we've been doing gain of function on a lot of these viruses, and we continue to see these viruses have gain of function out in our environment. Um, but if it does reach the beef supply, I mean, this could have devastating impacts. Of course, as of right now, no cattle have died. They've been, uh, they've been sh showing flu-like symptoms, but then we have to question, you know, is that gonna make it into the, probably not the milk supply, because they heat the milk up to like 200 and something degrees and kill everything in it. It has no enzymes, nothing. I mean, it's just filler, if you think about it. But what if it makes it into, you know, the meat supply? I don't know. And, and I'm not, you know, trying to cause a panic or anything, but I'd like, you know, if anybody else out there has information on this topic, I'd like to hear more about it from you guys. And I'd, I'd also like to know what your thoughts are on, you know, this HPAI. It's, it's, it's caused a lot of damage to, you know, the, poultry industry over the last couple years, the egg industry over the last couple years. Now it's making it into other aspects of agriculture. And it, it could long-term have, you know, devastating impacts on our food supply if it's, if it's not put under control. I mean, at this point in time, uh, it's, it's spread far farther than, than a lot of people probably anticipated it would. Anyway, developing story, interesting story. Um, let me know your thoughts down below.